Hey kiddos, here's feedback for Spiral 3. Uh, starting off, we're looking at the domain and range and uh, some other stuff section, uh, which I don't know what the name of this is at the moment. I think it's characteristics of graphs. That sounds about right. Uh, but this comes out kind of funny as the pages get spliced together. Uh, so first thing off, we've got to find the domain of the graph that we're given. I noticed that I'm looking at the uh, a weird-shaped thing. I know that domain is the leftmost point and the rightmost point in an interval. Uh, I'm going to use a closed interval because this particular domain has closed endpoints, so I can include those. Uh, okay, so I look at my leftmost point, and here I've got negative 2. My rightmost point, and I've got an x value of 1.67. And that's it. Uh, the other thing I need to make sure for that for domain is that we're talking about an x value and an x value in my interval. For the range, we're doing the same thing, uh, except instead of left and right, we're looking at the bottom and top. So the lowest point and the highest point in our graph. Here, the lowest point is going to be negative 2.5. That's a y value. The highest point is going to be positive 1.5. That's a y value, too. So we get a y and a y. That's the only interval that we talk about that uses y's. And that's my range. Uh, is z a function? For that, we use the vertical line test. And as soon as I hit something twice or more, it's not a function. So I'm going to say no, because it fails the vertical line test. I spelled vertical, interestingly, vertical line test. I can also say that there are two outputs for a single input here. Okay, on the graph of z, clearly label one point as a relative maximum. Uh, the easiest one for me to label is like right there. The uh, We can argue a little bit about the point down here, but I would accept it. And I would also accept this guy as a relative max. For a relative max, I'm looking for a y value that's higher than all the points that are surrounding it. Um, and in terms of this, uh, we have to deal with those places that are highest above the x-axis, or I guess if it's below, the least below. For our second feedback part, we're dealing with combining functions. Uh, and in terms of the stuff that's here, we've got to deal with uh, functions that are given to us in uh, equation and graph and table format. The first thing that we've got up, uh, we've got f and m, both of which are equations. Uh, g is a table, and this is h of x, our graph. h plus g of 4, I'm going to do up here just so I have a little bit of room is h of 4 plus g of 4. h of 4 is talking about the height of my graph when x equals 4. So I'm going to go over to 4, and here's the point 4, comma 3. Therefore, h of 4 is 3. g of 4 is talking about the output when x is 4. In this case, that's going to be 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. For number 9, we're doing f of h of 3. Uh, I'm going to work from the inside out. This is composition. And I'm going to find h of 3 first. In other words, I'm finding the height of this graph when x is 3. This is the point 3, comma 3. So I get 3 as an answer. I then take this 3 and plug it in to f, f of 3. f is my equation up here. 4 plus 
3 times 3, 4 plus 9 is 13, and I'm done. For f inverse of x, uh, that's asking me to actually take the equation f of x and find the inverse equation. I'm going to start out by right, ooh, I'm dragging stuff separately, which makes things fun. And that's pretty good. I'm going, to I'm going to start by writing that equation. Uh, and that equation is going to be, it's f of x. I'm just going to write that as y equals 4 plus 3x. Uh, this is the one that we had the most trouble with on this spiral. Um, and I think it's just because it's very different from anything else that we're doing here. And we're not really sure what to do for that. Uh, I know for inverses, I have to switch x and y. Same thing's going to happen here. So that's going to be x equals 4 plus 3y. And now I've got to get the new y by itself. I'm going to minus 4 to both sides. And in doing that, we end up with x minus 4 is equal to 3 times y. Now, to get that y by itself, we've got to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to have a final answer as x minus 4 divided by 3 is equal to y. I don't need to go any further than that. That's the inverse of this function, and that's uh, enough for us to get to the answer. Okay, uh, next up we've got 2m of 3 minus 3h of 2. Uh, well, m is my other equation, so I've got to see what that is. That's 3 plus 2x. I'm going to hold that in my head for a second. Uh, m of 3 is going to be 3 plus 2 times 3, which is 9. And then I've also got to find h of 2. I like finding these values first so I can build this equation all together. Uh, and going up here for the height of the graph when x equals 2, I get a value of 2. So 2 times 9 minus 3 times 2 is going to be 18 minus 6, which is 12.